Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, this is the first class of the uh, DC controls uh, sequence, and uh, the title of this class is Intro, Intro to Controls. And I want to start off with a safety tip before we uh, jump into the class content. And today's safety tip is to never enter a substation alone. Substations are inherently, actually, rather unsafe places, uh, despite our best efforts to make them safe. And uh, if you think about the amount of power that is flowing at any given time, uh, yeah, it's better off uh, if you do not uh, go alone. Uh, think of if you went in and were suddenly incapacitated in some fashion, you, uh, uh, who knows how long it would take uh, to, for someone to find you if you didn't have someone with you. Also, there's an added benefit aside from safety that if something else happens that, that is unexpected in the substation, it's kind of a good idea that uh, there's someone around to uh, back you up on your story. Anyway, uh, moving along. Uh, in today's class, we're going to uh, uh, introduce some of the basic elements used uh, in the control logic uh, for a sub substation that, and how we implement that. Uh, we're going to talk about some formats for that logic. And uh, uh, I'll show you a couple pictures and, and examples of that. Then I'm going to introduce uh, three uh, real simple uh, relay types that are commonly used in substations and things that you're going to really want to know how to use. That they're, they're very fundamental uh, to what we do. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're going to uh, look at a couple applications uh, that demonstrate these ideas. And this, this will serve as a really good introduction to some of the meteor matters that we will uh, dive into in, uh, in classes two, three, and four, uh, where we're really going to dive, do a deep dive into how uh, circuit breakers are, uh, work and how we control them. Okay, in this diagram, I've uh, shown how we, uh, how we basically set up our uh, uh, voltages for station service in, in a substation. I've shown at the top a, uh, uh, a battery charger and a battery and uh, uh, a DC control panel. And what you'll see as you look out at the drawing you, you should be seeing over here, okay, a, a, a DC panel board. Now, this is not entirely different from the one that you have in your house, except it's DC rather than AC, obviously. But other than that, it's basically molded case circuit breakers in, in a panel. And uh, what I've shown is in one of the circuits, one of the branch circuits goes out, and we take a positive and a negative, and we run it out, and that, those wires will run both into the control house, and they will also run in, uh, out, in, in many cases, out to the field equipment or yard equipment, including the circuit breakers. And what those become, the, 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 the proper term for that is that that is your control voltage. And it's through this process that we're going to implement the logic and how we're going to control uh, the circuit breakers that uh, are really the main part of a, a substation. There just isn't that much else to control in a substation besides circuit breakers. Okay, uh, this is a drawing. It's, it's an example of a, a large uh, DC panel uh, in, in a real big substation I worked on a few years ago. And uh, each one of these breakers is actually, although it's shown as as a single breaker, it's actually uh, two together, and they're wired together, and, and they're, they're ganged, gang operated. So if one pole trips, the other one also will trip and de-energize the whole circuit. Anyhow, this is just, a, 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 you know, an, again, a, a, an example of the type of drawings that we'll be creating and using in, in our substation designs. Okay, there are some real basic elements of logic that it's, it's helpful if you, uh, if you keep them in, in your mind and when you see uh, uh, things in certain patterns, think of it as logic. And the first one that I've listed is and, uh, and logic. And the, uh, if, you, if you look at right up at here at the top, that's, this is a logic diagram format for it. And that's how you write an and. So if A and B are one, 
then C will become 1. But if either A and B are 0, then C is, remains 0. The next is a Boolean equation. Uh, I'll tell you, if it were up to me, the AND symbol would have been plus symbol uh, in Boolean uh, uh, logic, but uh, no one asked me about it. So anyway, we use that star as the AND symbol. And then the final diagram is how you show it in ladder logic. And so to energize coil C, you have to close both A and B. And when you energize coil C, it will have some uh, uh, output contacts, and they will change state, either from open to closed or closed to open. And I'll cover um, th that here in a couple minutes and show you an example of how we implement that actually with hard wires. Now then, the next one down is OR logic. And in this case, if uh, in, in the first diagram right over here, we're, that, that's the logic diagram format of this. And in this case, either A or B will energize C. Then the equation, that's how you show it in a Boolean uh, logic. And then finally, we have uh, on the far right the way we show it in ladder logic. Now then, that's a really common thing to do because say that uh, our coil C is actually a trip coil and a circuit breaker. That means that either A or B can trip that circuit breaker. Again, or logic. Now then, there's one last one I want to talk about, uh, and then th this will be kind of the basic building blocks upon which we're going to do everything else, and that's not logic. And uh, in the case of this, um, not A or and not B equals C. So in, in the uh, ladder logic format, if you, uh, well, well, we'll cover this great length next week. But again, in the ladder logic format, not A, not and, not B equals C. All right, uh, a lot of this will make a lot more sense as we start applying it. Uh, uh, you'll just have to, have to trust me on this. And I, a point I want to make here, and I'll, I'll make this again um, kind of over and over to you, is there's nothing complicated about any of this. There's no one single concept that is difficult in a substation. The complexity comes when you put them all together. But if you understand the basic logic and the, the, the basic building blocks, you can take the time and sort through and work through how these schemes work, and then the more complicated things can then make sense to you. And that's how you'll be able to then conduct your projects and, and uh, uh, in your designs. Anyhow, moving along, there's a shorthand system that we use all the time, and it is called the ANSI numbering scheme. And what I'd like you to do in preparation for class two is go out either on the internet, from the butt, your buddy in the next cubicle over, wherever, I want you to find a list of the ANSI numbers, and it's uh, 1 to 99, and I want you to copy it, and I want you to bring it with you to the next class. In fact, I want you to bring it with you to the rest of the, the, the classes in, in this sequence. It's also a really handy thing simply to keep at your desk. The one that I first made a copy of, I still have 20-plus uh, years later, and uh, actually, oddly enough, it is somewhat out of date, but I, I do know the things that have changed in it. And the main one is actually on the screen. If you see down here, ANSI number 11 says re reserved for future applications. That was printed before the advent of microprocessor-based relays. And now, microprocessor-based relays get ANSI number 11, and there's a number of suffixes uh, to them that uh, have further define uh, what, what relay we're talking about. And so number 11 is now reserved for multifunction relay. Anyhow, uh, we, we will be touching on this uh, quite a bit as we progress uh, through this class. Okay, I want to give you an example of a drawing that shows ladder logic. And uh, if you look at the screen right now, what we have here is 
a DC schematic from a substation in Southern California. And the, the DC control voltages are these lines up here and down here. And then these are rungs of, the lo of logic in the ladder logic. The thing in the middle here is a, a fa fairly large multifunction relay. And this is basically how we organize these drawings. Um, again, in fact, we'll, we'll actually use this very uh, drawing in uh, the next couple of classes, and so you'll become more familiar with it. But again, the point I want to, to, to really show you here is that you have control voltages, you have contacts that are wired between them, you have inputs to uh, uh, you know, various uh, uh, functions on the relay, and although it's not shown on this drawing, you can get the, another component of this will be the circuit breakers that we are actually controlling. Now then, part of this, and, and kind of implicit in this, is some of these output contacts are actually programmed. So they have embedded within themselves additional logic. And the way we show those is not in ladder logic format, because really ladder logic works really well for stuff that we wire up with hard wires. However, program, pro, <coughs> excuse me, programmed logic really doesn't fall into that category. And so we, uh, we, we show it in different format, and we use uh, logic diagrams for that. Uh, this one we will be using in class four, where it's, which is where we talk about breaker failure logic. And you can see a series of AND and OR gates on this. There's actually a, 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 a timer in there, a time delay on pickup a relay, and a, a few other functions. But anyway, I, I just wanted to show you, it for the purposes of today's class, just that basic format of these drawings. Now then, when you actually program this logic into the relay, the relay doesn't actually understand logic diagrams. What it understands is Boolean equations. And there's a, a fairly simple method, um, again, I'm not going to cover it today, to convert what's on this drawing into a series of Boolean equations. And that's what you actually enter into the relay to get the relay program to execute this logic. OK, I want to shift gears for just a moment and introduce you to our first device. And aptly, it's the very first uh, on the ANSI numbering scheme. And this is a control switch. Now, the control switch that I'm using is actually really not the kind that we use anymore. Uh, this is an old General Electric switch that, um, well, oh gosh, it was being removed from a substation years ago and I just picked it up as kind of a souvenir and a teaching aid. But it makes a really nice teaching aid because you can actually see the contacts as they open and close. The, um, the newer version that we use, uh, I don't know, my, the one I typically will use is from the Electro Switch product line. And those, uh, it's, there's a large cylinder coming out of the back and the contacts are inside of it and you can't see them. So it really doesn't make a very effective teaching aid. But in this case, you see if you look on the front, there's a, uh, a handle, and then there's a slip fitting on the front that shows the color. And what it's doing is it's showing what is last done. So if I want to close the breaker, I would do that. And if the last thing um, that, that is operated is closed, then it's red here. If the last thing that operates is tripped, so the breaker would be open, then it's green. And notice as I do this, as I operate it, there are some fairly stout contacts here that open and close. And they're enough that they can handle breaking DC current, which is the topic that we're going to cover here in a couple of slides. Anyhow, again, ANSI number one. And for the close contact, you usually put a, a, a C next to it, so it'll be one C. The trip contact, you usually put a T next to it, so it would be one T. Anyway, uh, important device. Now then, the next device I'd like to introduce you to is the auxiliary relay. And 
Auxiliary relays are really, really fundamental. They're base, they basically have a coil in them, and the coil is essentially a solenoid. Um, and I've got a really large example of one right here. Again, makes a handy teaching aid because you can see it real well. And when you, there will be um, wires connected to these terminals up in front, and they then connect to the solenoid, which is basically a, 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 a round and round and round of, uh, of wire around a little uh, iron core, I believe. And so when you run current through that, it creates a magnetic field, and the magnetic field will cause this to do that. And, and when it does this, if you could look closely at the front, what you'll see is some contacts that change state. Now this is a pretty big device in comparison. However, you can get exactly the same thing in one of these. This is a flash cube relay, and this one is an even smaller flash cube relay. Now, what these guys have in them is exactly the same as what I just showed you. And they, so they've got a little tiny solenoid in them, and then when you run um, current through that, the current creates a magnetic field. That then attracts a, a little magnet, and it causes the, uh, the contacts to mechanically change state. Now then, in the logic form of this, if we look over here at the screen, what you, you have is the coil, and then you have that funny con combination there. Look at that. You, you have an, uh, a normally open contact, or what we would refer to as an A contact, and a normally closed contact, which is what we reform well, or what we would refer to as a B contact. Now then, when we put them together like this, we refer to that as a form C contact. And these devices have two form C contacts within them. And then you have a, at the base of these kind of an interesting plug uh, looking, uh, 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 oh, I don't know how to describe that thing. It's basically a plug. And so when you're actually uh, wiring these up, there's a socket these fit into, and the wires actually connect to the socket, and then you can plug this in and out. These are not particularly robust devices. Um, it's not that uncommon to damage them, and by having this plug uh, uh, you know, con configuration, it's easy to replace them if you need to. And uh, over the years, yes, I've had to replace a few of them. So anyway, uh, looking at this, again, we've got uh, uh, four... C contact, and we show those in the de-energized state. In fact, this is something that's another basic principle of uh, control logic. You have to show, you've got stuff that can either be open or closed. You have to know which it is and uh, so that you can properly interpret drawings and understand how schemes do. And the convention is to always show them in the de-energized state. And, and this is a topic, again, that I'll cover uh, as you know, in depth as we go forward. Okay, the final uh, device I want to talk about is the lockout relay. A lockout relay is very similar to an auxiliary relay, except that uh, once you have changed its state, it doesn't change back unless a human being intervenes and actually takes the handle on the device and uh, turns it to the reset position. Lockout relays are really, really important because there's certain, a lot, you know, a lot of uh, uh, protection schemes identify problems, um, for instance, in a transformer or some other problem within a substation that you want to trip for and you do not want to close back in until a human being has figured out that it's okay to do so. And so again, for this function, we will use a lockout relay. Now then. With the advent of modern uh, uh, multi-purpose uh, multi relays you know, uh, and programmable relays, and, um, and, and, and they have a lot of output contacts, it's fairly frequent, it's becoming more and more frequent that we don't actually use a lockout relay, but we will program that exact same function into our multi-purpose relay. Anyhow, again, we'll, we'll cover this uh, more in depth 
as we proceed. Now then, the, if we look over here at the screen, you will see that th this is the contact development uh, for a particular type called a, a, an LOR uh, by ElectroSwitch. And what they have is uh, a, a bunch of A contacts and B contacts. So now, they don't connect these up as form C contacts. It's just either A or B. And again, as we go through the class, or in, in subsequent classes, you'll see the various applications that we use for these, uh, particularly tripping, breaker failure, initiate, and block close. <coughs> okay, I want to introduce you to another concept here. And this is a really handy one to keep in your mind and really understand as you're doing uh, work uh, in, in substation uh, control design. And, and in fact, th this actually uh, ripples into quite a few things. And I want to ask you how, okay, when a contact is opening, um, either a contact in, in a device like this, or even within a, a, a circuit breaker, you know, within a circuit breaker, the, the contact is really large. I mean, it's about as big as your fist and on one side. And on the other side, there's a bunch of, of spring-loaded fingers that, that really hold that really tight on it. But anyway, as you're pulling it apart, how does current actually break? Well, what I've shown here on the, the screen is our uh, uh, typical AC waveform. You know, it's a sinusoid. And say that the contact starts pulling apart as you're at a current peak. What happens is you don't actually interrupt current as it pulls apart. You start to draw an arc. And then you're, as you keep pulling apart, you'll be going down that waveform until you cross a current zero. As you cross the current zero, obviously current stops. And then as you keep pulling apart and as the, the, the voltage waveform continues, the current simply does not reignite. And that's how you actually interrupt uh, uh, current in an AC uh, 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 waveform. However, look at the line that I've drawn across the top there, right here. Well, that, that's what it, current would be in the case of DC. Now, in the case of DC, notice there is no current zero. That makes DC current much, much more difficult to interrupt. Because as you pull apart, you're going to simply draw an arc until there's enough dielectric strength between the two uh, contacts to interrupt that current. Well, it, it, that dielectric strength, that's a tough thing because you're, you're, you've got ionized gas there in the form of an arc. So uh, if you try to break much current with a little device like this, it'll ruin it. it, you'll, it you, you may break it one time, and, but then you're going to have to replace this because the little contact inside of it will melt. And I can tell you from <laughs> first-hand experience about doing that. Um, anyhow, it, it really, among other things, gets to the point that as you're designing these uh, circuits and, uh, and control schemes, you have to pay attention to, on your control voltage, what is actually interrupting the control voltage as you, uh, a a as you open or close a breaker. And you have to make sure that what is doing that, that contact, is capable of doing it without being damaged. All right. We will uh, touch on this, I assure you, uh, more as we progress through this class. All right, I want to uh, close here today with a, uh, uh, an application, and this is basically a trip scheme. Um, it's not really shown uh, uh, too well on this drawing, and uh, what it is, right up here, and all of you should have this drawing uh, in, in the handouts, and uh, people watching online, you should have this drawing provided to you so you could be looking at it. Anyhow, this right up here is a list of all the things that trip this circuit breaker for protective trips, not control trips. The control trips are right here. 
but the protective trips are right up here. And um, if you look closely at it, you'll see a few other ANSI numbers. And what those are, those are all uh, uh, wired up in parallel. So any one of them can trip the breaker. And so it, I'm having trouble actually reading those. But as I recall, there's a couple line relays in there and a bus differential. Any one of those, the first one or the second or the third, can trip it. So notice that we're implementing for the trip scheme or logic. All right, again, there's nothing complicated about this. The complications really come when you put them all together. And I, I you know, will certainly uh, agree with you that this drawing has some complexity in it, but the purpose of this class and subsequent ones is to give you the tools to take those apart and actually understand them and then gain an understanding of how the, the, the scheme works. And in fact, to the point that you can come up with and, and design something uh, exactly like this. Okay. Um, now then, this, um, this is actually, probably should hit this slide uh, a moment ago, but this is that same logic, that same control logic for tripping a circuit breaker. Again, 86 or 21 or 87L. Now, those numbers, those all have meaning. We've already covered 86, that's a lockout relay. 52 is a circuit breaker, 21 is an impedance relay, and 87L is a line differential relay. And again, we're going to cover all these in the future, but just want to use that to kind of, you know, uh, de demonstrate how the ANSI numbering works. And again, how OR logic uh, works for us. All right. To conclude, in this class, we've introduced a number of concepts that we'll build upon uh, as we move forward in, in the, the next classes. And again, there's nothing complicated about any one individual component. It's when you put the components together that you get the complexity, but by knowing and learning each one of the components, it will give you the tools you need to have a greater understanding and then, and then work within these schemes. And uh, anyway, the, again, no, no concept is, is overwhelmingly complicated. The complication comes with numbers. Okay, next class, we will be diving deeply, in fact, for the next couple classes, into what a circuit breaker is and how they work and how we, we operate them. Very key, very fundamental to understanding how uh, control design is done on the power grid. Thank you.